Hi, this is Wayne from Bit Repairs. Thanks for joining me again for another video. Uh, this time a repair tutorial, and um, we're going to do a Nintendo Switch USB port replacement. So this is the Switch in all of its glory. Um, this is the USB port uh, that we're going to replace, and I've got to be honest, I've not seen one like this before. Uh, if you look at this USB port, come on, focus. Come on. You'll notice that um, the the row of pins. Uh, come on, I had this focus before and it's not doing it now. There we go. So you'll notice that there's the two rows of pins. Just there. There we go. So you've got two little rows. Uh, one of them is visible uh, when the port is placed on and the other one is not visible. This means that this repair can only be done with hot air. You are not going to be able to do this repair without hot air. So I was hoping originally that I'd be able to do this with board in. Um, unfortunately, I'm going to have to, uh, to take the board out to do this repair. Um, so the only way of doing this, if I just move this over to the other side so that you can see a little bit better, just all the contact details there. Uh, so what you're going to need is you're going to need a tri-wing screwdriver uh, to get these four screws out here. So there's four screws in the corners uh, that you're going to have to get out first. So these are tri-wing screws, these are. Uh, a bit like Apple started using on uh, on the iPhone 7s. Um, yeah, we're not sure why, but basically, um, just to stop casual people just looking inside, it's not going to stop repair technicians because you'll just buy the screwdriver um, and do the repair. So there's absolutely no way it's going to stop a proper repair technician from doing a repair. Um, so I'll do that. This little piece of plastic on the back is like a kickstand. Um, so the idea with that is that it lifts up and you can stand the, the device up like this. So what I'm going to do with that is just carry on lifting it and it just snaps off there. It, it, it's designed to break off. So don't worry about doing that. Um, what you've got now is let's just get rid of the screws that hold the back on here. Um, so the screws here, you've got a couple here. You've got one here. You've got one here, and then the two, all the, the the middle one on uh, the two sides are the ones that you need to take out. Now this is just a normal Phillips. Now this is, so you'll take the screw out the bottom first. Take another screw out the bottom. Make sure you put these screws in the right place on your your pad. If you're using like I use a magnetic pad. Just place them in the place where you've taken them out. Then you've got the middle one from one of these rails at the side, and then the middle one from the, the other rail. You'll see why it's important in a minute that you remove the middle one only. Um, and then you've got one more at the top here. Oh, there we go. So that now is the back cover should be loose on this now. So we should just be able to ease that off, let's just loosen that off there, that's just the, the game cartridge path, so we'll just loosen that off, there we go, it just lifts out like that there, okay, so that's the back off now, and you'll notice we've got this metal plate now, so the metal plate is the next part to come off, there goes my screwdriver again, so first thing you want to do with this metal plate is um, I'm going to have a look here. So we've got some screws. So we've got a screw up here in the top left. I'm going to remove that one. Oops. That was close. No, we lost that one then. It just pinged up. Another one in the, the opposite corner. There we go. Another one in the opposite corner. One in the bottom right corner. So all these screws are just coming out now. Uh, bottom left corner. This looks like it's holding down the uh, little module as well here. 
Um, so that's now gone a bit wobbly. Uh, so how's that held in, that one now? Uh, let's have a little look. Let's get some tweezers. Okay. Let's get a little look here. See if it clips on. There we go. So that's just clipped off there. Remember where that one went. And there's also another screw underneath there as well that we're going to have to take out. Okay. We've taken all of those screws out. Does this... Uh, no, we've got one in the middle. My God, Nintendo, you've uh, you've screwed this down well. In the middle, any more screws? Yep, there's another one at the bottom here. Okay, quite a few here. Another one there. So we're just taking all of the screws out that we can see. Let's have another good look around and see if we can see any more screws. Can't see any more screws now. Let's see if it lifts up. Just be gentle. Just see if it comes up of its own accord. If it doesn't, there must be more screws that we've missed. So, ah, there we go. Sometimes when it doesn't come up straight away, just because there's some maybe some heat sink compound on it underneath. So, is that lifting up of its own accord? Don't know if something's attached there. As a small piece of um, sticky tape at the top here, sticking it. There we go. So there's just a little tiny bit of sticky tape at the top there, just above the battery. So that's gone now. Right, so we've got a battery in there. So we're, we're almost in. There's plenty of heat sink compound on that. My God, that's quite a glob of heat sink compound. Um, right, so I'll, I'll be honest with you, this is the first time I've ever opened one of these up. Um, my magna pad's fallen out, so. I'm going to get another one, put that to one side. So let's carry on having a look at this. So I'm learning as we go along here. Uh, right, the bit I want out is I want this here. I want to be able to get that board out. So I'm looking at the shortest way of getting that board out there. Um, so everything connected has to go. Now the first thing I always disconnect is the battery. It, this is obviously the battery. Wires are coming out of the battery, going to the board. So let's disconnect that accordingly. Okay, that's gone. Right, next thing. So let's just work our way along the board. So here we've got a speaker. So that speaker there, how's that speaker clipped in? Okay. There we go. That's just pushed out there, that has that speaker. So we've got the speaker unplugged now. We've got a little clip here. So next one, we've got, might be better off showing you this under the microscope actually. You'll be able to see it a bit better. Let's just have a little look under the microscope together. I really like doing this under the microscope because you can see so much more what you're doing. So let's have a little look what we're doing here. There we go, so that's the battery connector. That was the speaker connector. Then we've got this one here. It's another little connector, little ribbon connector. Um, so we can see that this bit here, this little bit here, does that lift up? Yep, that just clicks up there. See how much easier that is with the microscope. So that there, we should just be able to, to lift that out now. Yep, that's just come straight out there as. Okay. Working our way along the board now. Working our way along the board. Uh, let's switch back to main view. Let's see here. So we've got nothing else here. We've got two screws here holding the charge port down. So two screws on holding the charge port down. So we're just going to unscrew them, put them on a pad. Okay, one screw, two screws. That's them out. So we're working our way along the board. We've got another screw. Actually, we've got one in the bottom corner here just where the battery connector was. 
so that's coming out going on our pad we've got one up here just up above the battery that's coming out okay going on the board right so we're working our way along working our way along got a couple of little modules here um this one looks like memory will that just come unclipped yep that's just come unclipped there so there we go that's a little memory module just come unclipped that can go there right what else have we got here so here we've got a little antenna connector let's just blink that can come out go to one side okay so what else have we got oh this one down here was actually i think for the uh for the the charge um you know where your your controller goes so there's also one opposite side here um we'll take that one out at the same time we know that one just goes blink and goes up and then we know that this comes pulling out there okay that's it just be very careful with all of these ribbon cables i'm just going to lift that one up with my finger Pull that one down, that's another cable out. We're getting there. So we've got another little, uh, this little speaker cable down here, this one, exactly the same as the other one. So that there, that's come out now. So that's the speaker out from there. Okay, so here we go. Let's have a look at the board now. So we've got nothing around here connected anymore. All that's been disconnected. We've got this big heat sink to come out now. Um, that looks like it's next in line. So we've got three big screws holding that in. So let's just unscrew them three big screws holding that big heat sink in. Okay. So it's quite involved actually just to try and get a just to try and get a charge port done. Um, not coming out yet. Ah, there we go. What's that done? Is that stuck in anywhere else? Okay, that seems. Let's just have a little look. Seems to be well adhered to the board here. We've just got some sticky tape here. There we go. That's just coming off now. That's just stuck on there. So that's come out. There we go. That's just come out there. Just have to be aware of that little foam sticky pad at the top. So I'm going to put that down there. Right, what's next? Ideally, we don't want to take this fan out. Um, what's next here? We've got this little board up here. So it's like a display board of some sort. Um, Let's have a look. Don't want to cause any damage here. So we've got this little thing up here, uh, a little bit of plastic. Looks like that's on top of the board. So we're going to take that out. Take two screws out the top there. Okay, that's just come straight out. Them screws can stay with that. We've got one down here. Just holding this little module in. So we're going to unscrew that. Right. So that module's come a little bit loose. Uh, it's actually going onto the board here. So it's got a little uh, FPC connector going onto the board there. So that's unplugged. Uh, that can actually stay connected because that, that there has nothing to do with the board now. So that's another little antenna disconnected here. I hope you're all remembering where all these go. Um, right, so... We've got another screw here that's just appeared. Another little screw, put that in the top left corner. Right. So, not seeing many more connections here now. Oh, we've got another screw just up here. That can go there. So, we've got two little connectors here. They need to come off. So, flick that one up. 
that one flick up. Not comfortable with that, let's go back to the microscope. Whenever you're not comfortable, let me do the hard work under the microscope, try and figure it out, and then at least you'll know what type of connectors these are then. So that's the connector there. There we go. So let's get our tweezers. Let's have a look. Yep. See that just clicked up there. So now you know it clicks up from that side. That's the nice thing about having a microscope is that you learn these things. So I mean I won't do this under the microscope a second time because I'll I'll remember these procedures. And I'll know that I'm just going to be wasting my time doing it under the microscope. Uh, I'll already know what to do, how to get this board out. So like this one here, this big, beefy, long connector, I can see there that we've got a nice white strip that you have to lift up first. So let's click that white strip up. There we go. That's nicely come up, that has. And then we're going to straighten at the side. And then at the other side. Okay. Okay. Okay, that's done. That's out now. So let's go back to back to main view. Right, are we happy that this board is now loose? So let's just try and lift it out now. Let's just see if it lifts out. We just want to be gentle. No rash movements on these. They're very delicate parts. You know, you don't want to be uh, you don't want to be ragging them around. Otherwise, you are just going to break them. And plenty of people do just break these things. So. Or have we got holding this in? It was just held in just a little bit by the speaker there. So it was just clipped under the speaker. So that's our board out now. That's the board out. So I'll show you where that was just clipped in slightly. So, uh, sorry, not the speaker, the, um, the fan. It was just snagged underneath the bottom corner of that fan. So if you get that, you just know that you can just pull it up a little bit. So there's the, uh, there's the board. Um, that's the bit that we want to replace. So we still want to do that charge port down there. So not really much on that side. It's all going to be going on at the top end here. So what we're going to do, I should really have switched on my heat plate before we started this because I'm going to waste time now. So um, just switched on the heat plate there now. I don't really recommend doing these jobs without a heat plate. Um, purely because you, you do risk damaging the device. Um, I'm going to get some capped on tape now. Uh, capped on tape, and I'm going to... Capped on off the area of this board that we're not going to be working on. So it also helps to tie the board down as well to the, to the table. So it's okay. What I might do with this, if I uh, get my soldering iron, and I'm just going to use my wide tip here. So that's my wide tip. There you go. So the reason being is it's got far more um, thermal capabilities. So what I'm actually going to do, before we tape this down to the board, um, just been thinking about it. I've not done this before, the first time. So I really... I really am as in the dark as you about this. Um, it's just I'm quite used to doing these things now. Um, so on the back here, on the back of the board, um, you've got four mounting points here uh, for this port. So you've got blob, 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 blob there. So what I'm going to do there is I'm just going to get some flux on those points, on those four points. Gonna flux them all up. 
Okay, like that. I'll just show you on the microscope view. Okay. All that heat compound is going to start melting onto the uh, onto the hot plate now. Um, but it doesn't matter, it's okay. So I've just globbed up all of those four areas. I'm going to get some solder now. Okay. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn my soldering iron on first. <laughs> um, wait for that. There we go, soldering iron's on. So, and all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to reflow a load of solder onto there. See that, how it's gone shiny? Just leave it on for a bit. Okay, I'm going to do the next one. Getting a bit hot now, this board. Okay, that bit there. Okay. Okay. The reason we're doing this is because, you know, the, this solder's not been, A, melted for some time, and B, it's not leaded solder, so it's got a higher melting point. So what we want to do is we want to mix it up with some leaded solder. It just lowers the melting point, so it just makes it a lot easier to remove for us. So there we go. We've just done the, the reverse side now. So let's get this board tied down. Nicely tied down. I think for this USB port, because it's it's a new type here that I'm not used to before. Um, I don't usually use um, hot air when taking a USB port off. However, you don't usually have pins hidden underneath the port either. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reflow um, all these areas here. Uh, let's just see if we can pull it up on. There we go. So there's the port. Um, I'm just going to reflow all of the, the mounting points that we can see here. So let's get our iron, get our flux. Blob loads of flux all over the back of it, all over the side. Don't forget, this port's dead. It's it's damaged. So, you know, you don't need to worry about ruining it anymore. So all we're going to do is we're just going to stick lap loads of solder onto it. Right? So loads of solder. Loads and loads and loads and loads. Loads on the other side. The more we can thermally help ourselves, the better. Okay. Fortunately, there's not much thermal mass on these, I don't think. So, that's them done. Because they are melting quite readily. I'm going to turn my hot plate down a little bit. So I don't think it needs quite the heat that you need on an iPhone. Um, so... These pins at the back now, I'm just going to get a load of solder on them. Okay, get them all reflowed. Now we can't do the ones underneath because we can't see them. Okay, but we are going to do as much of that as we can there. Right, so I think we're ready to use a bit of hot air now. So let's get our hot air on. And I'm not going to go max temp, I'm going to go to about 220 on this. And I'm going to use the iron and the hot air together in unison to try and lift this up now. Okay? So I'm going to heat it up. And I'm just heating it all up together. It's going to make a bit of smoke. And there we go. That just came off nicely. That was a lot easier than I expected. Right, great, so, let's turn off our hot air, okay, so all we did there, we used the iron and the hot air 
together to, to get that whole thing to reflow all at the same time. So now what we're going to do, we're going to get our solder wick. So, wick, 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 right? And we're going to wick all of this back now. We're going to get rid of all of this solder that we don't want. Okay. So we're going to wick it all off now. All the way, all the way. Let's try and clean these holes out as well. It's very important to clear these holes out. Just hover over them until it's wicked all of the solder out of the hole. Okay. So it's wicked it all out of the hole and it's completely empty. We want to be able to get our new port onto there. And we ain't going to be able to get it on if the solder in the hole. So. Just get some tweezers now. Use quite a lot of wick there. That's, that's a heck of a lot of solder that's wicked up. Maybe because I used a bit too much. But to be honest, I, I don't think you can use too much for this. When you're doing it, there's a lot of people that cause damage to these boards because they, they don't use enough. So I'm just going to check them holes now, make sure that they go through the board. That one does. I think that one does as well. So well, we're looking good there. Right, let's just get some isopropyl and clean this board up. Okay. Clean it all up. Yeah, we can see through those holes. See through them all. So what you want to be able to do, you want to be able to see through all the holes. Okay. Otherwise, it's just not going to work. Right, so this old port can go now. This old one, this old steaming port. That's the old one that we've just taken out. Okay. Now, a whole new problem now because I've misplaced the new one. So... Anyone remember where I put it from the start of the video? Otherwise, I might have to recap on this video and look at where I put it. Well, there it is. Cool. Found it. We're okay. Got it. Might stick it somewhere safe. <laughs> I don't know whether anywhere is safe on my bench, but I don't know. I'm not. I'm not the most tidiest workers. Um, but I get the job done. Um, right. So what I'm going to do now? I'm just going to test that this goes onto the board nicely. So what we want to do is that we just want to test that that goes nice and flush on the board. And see them pins at the back there? I want to check under the microscope now that they're touching the board. Not floating, touching the board. So let's have a little look. So they're all nicely aligned up. And they are indeed touching the board. So that's okay. So we've got no obstructions now. We've got nothing in the way of those. So I'm going to take that port back off again. Okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to flow some solder onto those pins. So these pins here, we don't want to get any solder anywhere else. We just want to flow some solder onto these pins nice and evenly. Okay. So let's get our iron. And then let's load up a bit of solder onto it. And then we're just going to drag it across. Okay. It's very important that we don't get solder in these holes. Or anywhere other than these pins. even more important that we don't have one pin that's massively more soldered than the rest okay 
So let's have a look at that now. Let's just tidy it up a tiny bit. Okay. Now looking good. Got a nice amount of solder on those pads. Okay. I'm just a bit worried about this one on the left here. Doesn't look to have much on it. So might just have to dab a little bit more onto there. So a little bit more flux. Okay. Reason being is because this solder now is going to seep onto. I'm going to use it to seep it onto the uh, the um, the connector. So we're going to reflow it onto the connector. This solder. Got a bit more on it now. Yeah, we're looking a bit better on that now. Notice I've got a tiny bit on the side there. Didn't really want that to happen. Okay, it doesn't matter too much. It, it will melt. Um, but uh, it's going to melt at a slightly different rate to these pins because that's a, that's a ground plane. We'll just scratch it off. want them ground planes to be as flat as possible. Okay. I can feel each one of them pins now. I'm not too worried about the other pins because I can see them. These pins I am worried about though because once this, once this connector's on, you cannot see whether these are soldered on or not. So you're, you're basically just kind of hoping that they are. Right, so... Next step, we're going to put some more flux on. Okay. Some more flux onto there now. Right. Where's our connector? So we've got our new connector here. Right. And now we're going to have to use some heat here. Now, really don't like using heat on boards. However, Nintendo have put us in a bit of a situation here. We have to. So I feel that that now is is too low down. Um, that board is is touching. Sorry, the the connector is touching the metal, and and the board um, isn't touching the the metal. So what we're going to happen is that the um, the the connector is basically floating. Um, we're going to have to find a way of rectifying that. So what I'll do is I'm going to use some. Um, iPhone heat shields here that I usually uh, have lying around. Uh, I'm just going to get a couple of those. Oops. Yep. A couple of those. I'm just going to peel that tape back. Okay. And I'll lift that board up there. Lift the board here. Lift the board there. Right. There we go. Stick that down there. Stick one down on the other side. There we go. Right. That connector's floating now. Nice floaty connector. Right. So, going to hot air on. I'm going to go up to... I'm going to go 230. I know that this leaded solder melts at 220. I'm going to go up to 230 to be extra safe. Um, just make sure it's flowed and what we're going to watch out for now is we're going to watch out for this solder melting onto those there and we're going to leave it a little bit more and we're going to just give it a bit of a nudge it's a bit like putting a, um, a an IC on to be honest um, so just going to do that focus in a little bit more right I'm going to go for this now because we can't sat around all day long. We've got to get this one at some point. Okay. It's preheated pretty well, so... Knows where it stands. Okay. Okay. 
There we go. Did you see that just start going then? All change colour. Okay. I'm moving it around a bit now, which should hopefully get. Everything sticking. Right. I'm gonna put some pressure on, and I'm gonna move the iron, move the hot air away. Okay. So you notice how all of those reflowed. I kept it there a little bit longer. I was hoping that that hot air would get underneath, and hopefully, has given us good adhesion for all of those. I'm just going to give all of them a bit of a nudge now. So, all of these pads that are visible, I'm going to give them a nudge. So, if all of these on top don't move, we should be quite confident that all of the ones underneath are also not going to move. Can't be sure, though. So here's, this is the first time I've ever done this as well. So, you know... I'm not sure either, <laughs> um, but as far as I'm aware, that is now the pins soldered into place, okay, and turn that hotbed off now, because I'm fed up with burning my fingers, um, <laughs> can turn off the hot air, we don't need that now, so, right, that's out of the way. That's all there. Let's go back to to the view, main view. Right, so you can see there we've got all of the pins soldered in. Okay. There we go, all the pins in. However, we've got no um side mounts on yet. So, you know that this is one of the most important parts of these ports because if your side mounts aren't on, then it's just going to end up falling out again. These these side bits are so important to get as solid as possible. Um, so I call them side mounts, the ground plane, basically. Um, sorry if I'm sounding a bit um, basic to people, but I try to kind of dumb it down a little bit for, for people that don't understand uh, engineering terms and stuff like that. So these... Mounts here. All I'm going to do now, I'm going to get some flux on that, flux on the other side, flux on the back, flux on the back side. Okay, all over the show. Okay, so we've got plenty of flux on there now. I've just moved the board. Okay, so there. All we're going to do now, just put some solder on. You ready? Okay, a little bit more. There we go. Same on the other side. Okay, so sticking us, you know, plenty on here. one at the back okay nice amount there same on the other side I'm done. Sorry, I've just uh, moved it away a bit. Okay, so see, they're nicely done. Um, let's just clean that up there. I think it looked tidy. I know these things are going back inside a case again, but still, they're going to look good. Turn the board over now, now on the back. 
We're just going to check that we've got enough solder on here because I want to make sure that we've sealed off. See there, that's fine. That's fine. These ones here, that's not good. That's not good. So that's not quite enough solder has flowed through. So we're just going to put a little bit on from the back now. Just to fill them holes in. Okay. Just going to flow on through the holes. There we go. Much better. Oh, has that done it? Sorry, I was trying to be clever there, not looking at it through the microscope. Okay. There we are. I'm happy with those. There's plenty of solder on all of that. So that's nicely mounted up now that is let's just clean all of this residue away all of this flux residue okay there we are right so back to main view back to there so we've done all of it we've done the mounting points we've hopefully done all the pins you can't see them all so your guess is as good as mine as to whether this works or not. And I don't know whether we can test it first because we've got no battery plugged in. So what I'm going to do is I actually have the connection here. I'm just going to plug it in and see if it draws anything off of the, uh, the, the power supply. Just see what it does. So let's plug it in. And... It says we're drawing an amp. So, for all intents and purposes, it says it's working. So, that's a good start. <laughs> now, obviously, we've got data pins and all sorts of other stuff underneath there as well. So, I've got to think about all of those. Um, not really for testing on this video, but uh, I'm sure we've got good, good connectivity for charging. Um, I'm hoping that, uh, that the rest of them are okay as well. I will try and plug it in USB once it's connected uh, onto the computer. Uh, so this board's going back in again now. Bottom end first. Make sure all of these pins, all of these ribbon cables, sorry, are all out the way. So we don't want to trap any of them underneath the board as it's going back in again. Okay. Remember, it's snagged on the fan, so don't be too worried about it snagging again on the way back in. Okay. That's all right. So, that's fine. That's fine. So, all we have to do now is just reverse the order of everything that we unplugged from this board. Okay. So, we're just going to go all the way back. I'm going to do these speakers first. I don't know whether to cut this video short now because you've all seen the, the method of how this is done. Um, you're really just reversing the technique of disassembly in order to reassemble it. So I think maybe, unless you want to hear me rambling on, um, then yeah, thank you for uh, for watching. Um, I've just started a few more videos actually um, on uh, on tutorials, um, kind of component tutorials. Uh, I've not finished them yet, but I'm halfway through making them. Um, unfortunately, I can't really do it in in one sweep as I do with these ones. Um, you know, these videos I don't do any editing on them. They're they're literally straight in, straight out. So once I've finished this, then I ain't going to edit it in any way. I will literally post this exactly as it is now. I don't believe in um, tricking people as to what I'm doing here. Uh, you know, there's a, a lot of these videos out there which are kind of 
they're edited down to to be untrue as to what they actually are. Um, you know, I mean, I, I love I love some of the the fixing videos and stuff like that, um, but the ones that you see are often um, cut short. I mean, we're up to 45 minutes now on this repair. That is a realistic time that you should spend doing one of these repairs. Um, maybe a little bit less time because obviously you're not going to be having to talk to a camera while you're doing it um, and deal with the little intricacies of that. Uh, so, yeah, maybe a little bit shorter. Uh Obviously, bear in mind, this is the first time I've ever done this particular job. So, second time, third time, fourth time, it's going to get quicker. The more you do these things, the quicker you're going to get at doing them. So, it's a natural progression, isn't it? So, yeah, well, uh, we're nearly done on this, actually, now. I've just got two of these flexes to put in. And then I suppose I can show you whether it works to USB or not as well. Um, so yeah, anyway, I was, I was, as I was saying, uh, um, I do mean to do some more videos for uh, tutorials. Um, if there's anything you'd like tutorials on, any components or uh, stuff like that, um, if you want to see me do some kit builds or anything like that. Uh, more than willing to oblige. They're always good fun. Keep you entertained for half an hour. You don't really learn a great deal from them. Um, once you've got your skills, uh, you you know you you kit builds, but. You know, if you're using it as an educational tool, um, absolutely great. You know, it's top notch. Um, if you if you don't know about electronics and you you're trying to learn from scratch, um, these kit builds really are uh, a godsend, especially when they go wrong. Um, I remember what, the first computer I ever had actually. Um, and I overridden the, uh, the the operating system as a Commodore Amiga. I was absolutely devastated. Um, and that's that's really what uh, what, what kind of gets you into a logic uh, type of thinking. Because um, you had to, there was no internet back then. You had to try and work it out for yourself what what had happened and where you went wrong. So it wasn't easy having to think for yourself entirely back then. So this uh this FPC connector doesn't want to go back in again. You gotta be very careful with FPC connectors. Um on iPhones they are uh, they're an absolute nightmare if if you uh if you force one of them then you're in trouble um you don't force these things the FPC connectors uh if you've not got alignment on an FPC connector do not try and force it in just steadily do it just steadily take your time just have a go take it back out again put it back in take it back out put it back in until eventually you get your alignment right. So, just putting all of these components back on again. Memory, I think, goes here. If I remember right, and then clips down onto there. So, that's okay. Uh, I think we're ready to put that back in again now. Don't want that to get in the way. So, that's all okay there. So uh, these are all going swimmingly back into place. There we go. That was there. Give that a good squidge around. Just get the, the compound going again. Obviously some of it's been lost. So sometimes um you know if you if you wanted to you could reapply the compound again. Um I had a quick peek and I I didn't believe that I'd lost enough compound to make a an issue out of it. 
Um, so all of these screws are going back in where they came from. Um, I find if you're not sure about where a screw goes, put all of the ones in where you are sure first. Um, you know, just, just work your way around and go, oh, I know where that one goes, I know where that one goes, and then wherever's left, however implausible, must be where it goes. So, there we go. I think we're done from that one there now. Right, so that's that's my first pad out of the way. So that first pad was the majority of the bits. Um, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to plug the battery back in again. Um, so we've got this bit here now, which is the plate on the back. So the plate's going back on again. Just that little piece of tape at the top, just remember about that. A little wire there, which is for the speaker, we don't want to get that trapped. So just be a little bit wary of that when you're, you're reassembling. Um, that speaker wire seems to be um, fouling in the way for me. So it's a good job I didn't just cut the video off in an unrealistic place, isn't it? Because, uh, you know, you, you do still have stuff that goes wrong, even during the reassembly process. There we go. You know, just, just be careful about it all. Don't rush it. Okay, so now we've got some more screws to go back in again. Um, we've got, first of all, I remember there was one down in the bottom left. And that had to go on first. And we've got this little thing that goes back on here again. So, it's just clipped back in. I just felt that go. Okay, that there. It's got a screw to hold it in. Down there. Okay. Now, all of these other screws are all the same size. So, I'm quite happy with those. So, I'm just going to work my way around now. Rescrewing all of these white screws back in again. All these silver screws back in again. Sorry. Okay. Do you believe that's everything done? Okay. Right. Happy with that. Let's just test it now. So let's see what we get by plugging in the power at the bottom. So do we get anything on the screen? So let's plug it in. What do we get? So we got a charge symbol in the top corner. Excellent. That's always a good start. Um, obviously, we're not going to get any kind of USB until uh, until it's been charging for a short while. Um, so I'll post a, a comment um, once I've. Uh, let's just go onto the computer and just see if it does do anything. Okay. I've plugged in. No, we're not going to get anything on the computer. I'll make a comment in the video once I've uploaded it. I'll let you know if it's uh, USB'd okay um, once we're all powered on. Um, so, remember, we didn't have to take off um, nearly as much as what would have had to have been taken off if you were just following a, a disassembly video. Um you know, that's that's why it's important that if you're doing um, a, a charge port, you know, in some of the disassembly videos, I've got to be honest, I did watch a couple before doing this, uh, which is how I knew how to take the, the cover off. Um, but I didn't know. See these side screws? Um, I was quite ready to take them all out until I realised that just taking one out of each side released the back case. So... Let's uh, put those screws in. We've got one in the top now. One more here in the top. Got two in the bottom holding the USB in. So 
So I specialize mainly in uh, in iPhone repairs, micro soldering iPhone repairs. So doing TriStar, um, charge IC repairs, backlight repairs, um, and uh, no power, doing data recovery. Uh, I do HDMI ports on uh, on Xboxes, on Playstations, um, and uh, that, that's the brunt of what I do on a day-to-day -day basis with uh, with these things. Um, sorry, I should have this on uh, on camera, shouldn't I? Uh, all I'm doing is I'm just putting the the, the tri wing screws back in again. So that's that's what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, it's quite enjoyable. Um, keeps me busy. Work for myself. Um, yeah. So. Uh, but if you want me to do any other videos, feel free. You know, I'm I'm open to suggestions. Check me bench, check me mat, no screws left. Happy, excellent repair. I am well happy that that is now a good repair. So thank you very much, everyone, for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed. Um, I've quite enjoyed doing the repair, even though it is now half past midnight. And, uh, yeah, I, I hope to see you again soon for another repair video. Uh, thanks for watching. Good night.